Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about portfolio rebalancing. It is based on this book and you can click on the image or the link below the video. We will use the S&P 500 as an example and it is a stock market index of the 500 largest companies in the United States. We consider investments in the S&P 500 for all 10 year periods between January 1962 and December 2013. We will assume that dividends are reinvested in the S&P 500 and there are no taxes. The average annualized return was 10.1% for all 10 year periods. The worst 10 year period had a loss of 4% per year, which corresponds to a loss of a third over 10 years. The best 10 year period had a return of 19.8% per year and the total gain over 10 years was 509%. You should keep the average return in mind as well as the worst loss and the best gain per year. So what is a US government bond? You lend money to the US government and they give you a bond as a proof. This is considered the safest investment in the world. The bond pays interest to compensate you. Between 1962 and 2015, the interest rate, also known as the yield on the US government bonds, with one year maturity was 5.5% on average. But the bond yield changes a lot over the years. In 1981, the bond yield was 17%, but in 2011, it was almost zero. Return of your money is guaranteed by the US government. So if you own the bond until it matures, then you cannot lose your money. So how do you allocate your portfolio between the S&P 500 and US government bonds? Well, the worst loss for the S&P 500 started in October 2007, and the loss reached about minus 55% for a short time in March 2009. So it lost more than half. The rule of thumb is to multiply the max amount you can tolerate losing by two and invest that amount in the S&P 500 and the rest in US government bonds. So let's say your savings are $100,000 and you believe you can tolerate losing $20,000 in a stock market crash that is hopefully recovered within a few years. Then you multiply the $20,000 by two you get $40,000, which is the amount you should invest in the S&P 500. The remaining $60,000 should be invested in US government bonds with a maturity of one year or lower. You can rebalance your portfolio once a year back to your desired allocation. For example, if your portfolio is divided 50-50 between the S&P 500 and US government bonds, so you have 50,000 invested in each, and then if the S&P 500 gains 20% and the government bonds only return 5%, then your portfolio has $60,000 in the S&P 500 and only $52,500 in US government bonds. So to get the portfolio back to 50-50, you sell $3,750 of your S&P 500 investment and you buy more bonds so that $56,250 are invested in each. Let's look at the historical performance of a 50-50 rebalancing between the S&P 500 and US government bonds. And this is for the period between 1962 and 2013. The average annualized return was 8.5% for all 10 year periods between 1962 and 2013. The worst 10 year period had a return of 0.5% per year. And the best 10 year period had a return of 14.5% per year. Remember that a full investment in the S&P 500 had an average annualized return of 10.1% for all 10 year periods. The worst 10 year period had a loss of 4% per year. And the best 10 year period for the S&P 500 had a return of 19.8% per year. So because we are rebalancing between the S&P 500 and US government bonds, we don't have any losses, but the average long-term performance is not as good as a full investment in the S&P 500. The rebalancing underperformed the S&P 500 in about 69% of all 10 year periods, and the rebalancing underperformed US government bonds in about 22% of all 10 year periods. 
The rebalancing had losses in 15% of all one-year periods, and the worst loss was 22.5%. Remember that the S&P 500 itself could lose almost 50% in a year. For the rebalancing, the losses were small and very rare after 5 years, and there were no losses after 10 years of rebalancing with a 50-50 allocation. So the conclusion is that the S&P 500 can be very volatile, and US government bonds have low but guaranteed returns. To allocate your portfolio between the S&P 500 and US government bonds, you should multiply your max tolerable loss by two and invest that amount in the S&P 500 and the rest in US government bonds with a maturity of one year or less. If you rebalance your portfolio between the S&P 500 and US government bonds once a year, then you lower the volatility of the portfolio and you also lower the losses, but it also lowers the long-term returns compared to a full investment in the S&P 500. You can see more details on the book and you can click on the image or the link below the video.